Um, earlier, uh, earlier, um, you had mentioned the, the like boying and, and uh, the idea that b boy and came, like in theory of came from that, right? Yeah. And then uh, you also touched on the idea that like um, break boy and b boying came from like the, the idea that the b stood for break, right? So like yes. I'm wondering if, if like all all of those are just theories or if there is one that is central because the one that I was taught was the break one, so yep. like, the boy one I only just learned that today, right? So I'm wondering if it's one of the other or it's just they're all theories. It's all or, argument. The, yeah. the problem that we're having right now is that um, either either there's OGs that are telling the truth or there's uh, people that are trying to market a word or a phrase. Hmm. So um, my experience, again, my research, um, I've even found OGs that still call it breakdancing. So it, it, brings, it begs the question, hmm. like, did they call it that? Or did they get caught up in it and now it's just ingrained? Right? Like, people will say that. My understanding is that, so the hip-hop gems, if you watch the Get Down, they give you the idea that Cool Herc through these parties, um, or I hope they do, I don't have to watch every season, but they kind of give Herc this godlike status. Mm -hmm. So Cool Herc is this DJ from, from the Bronx, and he threw, um, threw these, these uh, sort of like basement jams, and people, uh, people universally call that the birthplace of hip hop. That he brought these elements of, of spinning breaks and making b-boys get down, and they would get down to the break. Um, and he would isolate the break, so he would buy two records. He was the first DJ to buy the two records. And when the break for one thing was um, running out, he would, play the, he would play the next record and it would extend the break. He called it the merry-go-round. And he found out when he did that, the b-boys, because b-boys used to only get down to the break, but now they would, but they would just go off for like five seconds. But because these breaks were extended, they would do longer sets. And that's where the, like, the intricate footwork was born. And so, uh, he would call them the break boys because they would go off on the break <laughs> is the theory they were like yeah break boys and he called them b-boys and, and when he said b-boys he didn't mean universally like how we're all we're b-boys he literally meant a specific group of, of, of b-boys um, the nigga twins um, Salsa or Sasa Trixie um, Amazing Bobo James Bond and Clark Kent and I'm missing a couple I think El Dorado Mike these are like very archetypal, like way back, okay? Um, he meant them specifically, <clears throat> is the rumor. Now there's a b-boy by the name of Track Two who says in his experience, we dance to the beat of the music. So we're called beat boys. Mm -hmm. And he was like, now if you look at it in terms of how it sounds, it makes more sense that beat boy turned into beat boy mm -hmm. really quick. So there's an argument there, but other people are like, no, nah, it means break. He's like, yeah, but if you say break boy a million times, you're never going to come out with b-boy. Mm -hmm. But Herc was like, no, I meant break. Like you get to a breaking point and you're a break boy. So there's the, there's the argument there. And then other people are like, no, nah, man, it started in the Bronx. The B is for Bronx boys. Mm -hmm. Right? So now some people are like, who cares? It's just b-boy. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like, who cares what it is now? It's b -boy. But the reason that they were doing stuff like that is because uh, every now, every generation or so, we lose the emphasis on the music. And people, people like, like b-boys are like, b-boys and b-girls are like flying now. Like they're doing moves that are just incredible, which are great, but a lot of the essence of dancing to the music is lost, right? So they try, I think they try to emphasize the break and the beat because they're, they, these, these uh, people are trying to reel it back into the, to the essence, right? Which is character and boyoing and dancing like that. So that's my, that's what I think. Uh, so to answer your question, is there, a, no, it's up for debate now. Mm. Universally, we think it's for break, which is why I kind of leave it out and I just call it breaking now because mm -hmm. that is an inarguable. Like people are like, yeah, we did call it breaking through. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like, that's the thing. And so, and they think that in the eighties when um, companies were hiring uh, uh, breakers, uh, they'd call, oh yeah, you guys do that break dance stuff. And that's where that term came from. But the problem is, is that at the same time that they were doing that, they were hiring poppers, and they lumped them all together and called them break dancing. Yeah. Yeah. So back in the 80s, somebody would be popping, which is its own dance from the West Coast that has its own history, and they were like, yeah, it's all part of break dancing. You know what I mean? And so there's a confusion. In, in the early 90s, when I came up in, in dance in Winnipeg, I thought it was all one thing, too. I started as a popper. 
So it's like, and I was like, yeah, I'm breakdancing with the rest of these guys, right? So it's like, well, I didn't start as, like I, I heavily popped, but I, I did break into, and I thought it was all one thing. So until I got older and started to learn that and started to respect the other history, you know, everybody called it breakdance. Like, mm -hmm. that was just it. But really now it's b-boying, b-girling, or breaking. Breaking, or take out the G, put out apostrophe, make it really street. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So sorry, I didn't really answer no, the question. Yeah, no, it's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, just for more research. Yes. Um, so did you, do you know all these things through your just like one day, like, Encyclopedia. It's um, it's who I am. Um, I'm a nerd. Okay. I'm a nerd like through and through. So when it comes to comic books or whatever, I just I like being immersed in it. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so when I when I started to do breaking, when I started to take breaking, um, there was very little information that was out there. But every now and again, like back in the days, you used to you used to be able to go to chapters and get graffiti magazines from like France or L.A. That used to be in the magazine section. Or when a b-boy crew or rock city crew would put out a video, they used to do little interviews sometimes. And my crew used to just be like, eh, like who cares? Let's just watch the break-in. But I was like, no, what are they saying? <laughs> right? And every now and again, they would, uh, as they say in hip hop, they drop a gem. Right? Like, like every now and again, like they'd say something and you're just like, what, what is that? You know what I mean? And like you find out little, me personally, I find out more and one thing leads to the next. So from being able to, to read these magazines and find like an interview with track two when he's talking about guys like Spy. Like there's a b-boy um, named Spy and he's so legendary, there's like barely any footage of him and they call him the man with a thousand moves and he's from Crazy Commander. And 90, maybe like 80, maybe 90 percent of the moves that modern b-boys do today that like are foundational come from Spy. And like that, like, so that's just crazy, but I knew, like, I read about him before videos got put out and they finally interviewed Spy, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's from stuff like that. I would just dig and just find these little things and I keep them where I cut out the article um, or I just keep telling my story, myself the story like over and over again. And so venues like this are, are one of my only chances uh, to kind of share that kind of stuff or um, cypher talk. You know what I mean with Angelo. So it's like those are the only places that I have to do that. But that's that's where I get it from. It's just from being a nerd and being like, who who's that? You know what I mean. And then now that we have the internet, there's even more. But it's still very hard. Like it's it's like like I said, like the the OGs that are out there, they're just like fifty to sixty year old guys that are just regular guys. And unless you're going up to them and asking them these questions, they're not telling anybody this story. You know what I mean. So it's really you have to really dig on the internet. Gone to some dark places for this info. No, <laughs> I like, no. but like, uh, yeah. But uh, like, Mr. Wiggles has a website. Uh, Mr. Wiggles, or sorry, Wigzy, W I G Z W E dot biz. Go there and yeah, Wigzy, Wigzy dot biz, and you'll find all the graffiti uh, history. You'll find all the hip hop dance history, not just breaking, but popping, and like social hip hop. And the, this is your starting point to open up more doors. Um, and other websites and stuff. If you go there, like you could spend, I spend hours there. So it's like, uh, that's, where I, that's where I get it from. Again, it's, it's important for me to know this. You know what I mean? It just, for me, it enhances it all. It's like, I'm not even really the best dancer, to be honest. Like, I just, I don't want to battle in the ears. I just like knowing this stuff. Like, it's just culturally cool to me. Yeah. Oh. Yes. You said earlier that you do body workouts now. Like, yeah. yeah. When you used to do weights, does that help with your like, strength control? Like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely it does. Absolutely it does, but the thing is that, uh, and again, I'm not an expert. That's the other thing. I kind of pull bits and pieces. Um, <clears throat> it does make, it, it makes me feel stronger. It does. Mr. Wiggles is the king of dope one-liners for breaking. Like, one of his is praying till it's DNA, right? And what he means by that is literally doing that kind of stuff. Like, drill your drop so that they become natural so that when you're in a situation where you feel like getting down to the floor and you're not even breaking, you might be doing like, like new style hip, you know, like hip hop style. Look at Lay Twins, and look at what they do. You will see that foundationally they know how to do this stuff. Like they're just masking it by adding uh, popping techniques and techniques from everywhere, right? So, but the foundation is this. The DNA is this. Uh, train till it's DNA. Wiggles' other one that I like is transitions are the mission, right? And what he means by that is you can know. Sorry, Mr. Wiggles, I'm getting this wrong. Um, you can know every move, 
But until you know how to transition in and out of those rules, it's not gonna matter, right? So transitions are the mission. So knowing things like drops like this, spinning out, knowing where, yo, this move is actually, this move that I'm doing is actually embedded in this other move. So that means I can go from here to here. That's the important thing, right? Like if you're learning martial arts and you know, you're like, yeah, yeah, you're not gonna like punch some guy and then like, like, <laughs> like, like kick you in the face, right? You're gonna learn how to like go from one to the block to the next, right? You're gonna learn how to transition, right? And it's the same thing with the dance, right? I know that seems very obvious. I, I hope you guys already understand that. But if you don't, that's, that's really a transition to the mission. So the little movements that are embedded in between top rock, footwork, and freezes, which unfortunately we didn't get to go to, um, that's actually the meat of it. If you know more, like Bob brought this out one time, and it's actually true, a lot of breakers get stuck in doing the same sets. They know in practice they have this arsenal of moves, but when it comes to battles or, or circles, they're suddenly like, why am I doing the same thing? And, and usually it's because you're using the exact same transition. And it's because you muscle memory train to do this one drop, and out of that one drop, I know that I always go into it. And so you have all these, you have this funky top rock, and then you go down to the same drop, and then you accidentally start going back into the same move. So if you start to learn, different drops, your body starts to figure out, crap, now I'm here. Like for instance, so usually you do this, and then you always go into footwork, right? But if you start like, okay, I'm gonna try this instead. Now what? You know what I mean? Now you're forced to like, oh crap, oh, oh crap. Like, and then it just, it opens up new movement, right? So the more entryways that you know, the more keys, the more doors, like the more you have to explore. Or at least that's been my experience. Right? So whenever I get stuck to, I try to think of different drops. Whether they're, I'm drilling drops that I already know, and unfortunately I only got to show you like a very small, limited amount, but also creating drops based off of what you know already as dancers and as whatever else you do outside of here, right? So for instance, if you play softball, one of the things you can top rock and slide for home base, and now you're doing like, that's a new drop. Do you know what I mean? It's not even do. <laughs> right? Do you see what I'm saying though? So I'm bringing elements that I know, right? Like I come from a martial arts background, so I could, I could be top rocking and then just as simple as this, right? But it's opening those doors, bringing me to new spots. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's where you're gonna um, create new moves or at least discover new moves, right? Moves that you hadn't done before. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we got a bit of time, so I was kind of hoping to do a Q&A if you had any. Does anyone have any questions?